Let's uh, now shift focus to some political updates. The DMK made some tall promises to the people of Tamil Nadu ahead of the upcoming elections. They have made some bold promises, in fact, to students, including scrapping of the NEET exam, waiving off student debt and free rail services. They've said that they will compensate families of the people who died during demonetization. The DMK promised revival of the old pension scheme as well as metro services in all cities across the state. All right, we have uh, Pramod Madhav joining us live and with him we have DMK leader Mr. Sarvanan joining us as well. Uh, Pramod, over to you if you can have a conversation with Mr. Sarvanan and help us understand what, what are the key points of the manifesto because some of it is quite ambitious. Certainly, this, this particular manifesto has close to 100 points of which certain things are very uh, are kind of like uh, interesting actually, as you exactly mentioned, uh, waiving of students' loans and like uh, uh, like uh, once again bringing back, say, the Samutram Dhatitam and those kind of plans. And very interestingly, after the Polachi case, emphasis has also been given about curbing sexual abuse, human trafficking and violence through social media. We have the spokesperson for DMK. Thank you for talking to us. Uh, sir, about this particular uh, manifesto, there are close to 100 points. If you call it as a highlight, beginning Tamil as a co-official language, or student waiver loan, how are you planning to actually uh, make it real? See, DMK is a party which has always acted upon the promises. See, now the Rajasthan Chief Minister, Chhattisgarh Chief Minister are waiving of the farm loans on the first day. This has been done by our great leader, Dr. Kalanjar, in 2006. 2006, the highlight of our promise was that we will waive the farm loans and that we signed on the first day. So, we are known for implementing our promises and that is why we have promised that we will waive the student loans this time and we have also promised that we will abolish NEET. We have also said that we will strive for the release of the seven killers of Mr. Rajiv Gandhi. Apart from that, we are also saying that we will give compensation for the people who lost their lives in the demonetization disaster. Demonetization has been implemented to satisfy the ego of a single man which had far great ramifications which destroyed our economy. So we want to give justice to them. If you look at the overall promise of this manifesto, this will give justice. This will undo the injustice done by the BJP government in the last five years. But what about the uh, kind of like a promise where you say that even uh, uh, in the private sector you will have reservations? Don't you think it will amount to a large amount of confusion unless and until you have a pre-planned uh, a kind of scheme? Won't you, don't you think it will also cause like some sort of confusion like demonetization? I don't think it will create any confusion. What we are saying is that we will implement reservation like that of the government jobs in the private sector also. This has been a long pending demand for so many years. We are a party which will not do anything overnight just to satisfy somebody's ego. We are a party which are focused on the welfare of the people, welfare of the downtrodden. So if when we come to power, we will implement this on a step-by-step -step process and ensure social justice prevails and pervades across the various strata of the society. How are you planning to once again bring that uh, pricing administration of petrol and diesel? Because recently we saw like almost three months back how it rose all the way to five rupees within a month and now we have promised that you will bring back the petrol price regulation. How are you planning to implement it? See, before this everyday increase, we left it to the market. They said the market will decide how much, the companies will decide how much price the petrol has to be increased. But what had happened is, the fluctuating international oil prices, the real impact was not passed down to the customer. The real benefit, when the crude prices came down, the central government increased the taxes. The other oil companies, intent on their profits, did not reduce the uh, prices. But now, prior to that, there was a system which was controlled by the government where the petrol prices uh, did not increase every day. And suddenly we are seeing a 5 rupee or a 10 rupee increase. So we will have a council. The earlier system will be implemented. That is what we mean. Well, two things. One last question is that two things I don't see in this manifesto is a, a large amount of promise about freebies. And the second thing is of the 48 pointers which your leader read out, we don't see much plans for the farmers especially. Uh, any reason? See, with regard to the freebies, even in 2016, we wanted a welfare economy. We, don't, we did not promise anything. Unmind, mindless freebies is not our cup of tea. We want all-round growth. We know only if there is economic revival and growth, we'll have enough money to dole out for welfare schemes. So, 
we have not given anything on that. With regard to the farmers, we are promising, we are saying that the farm loans will also be waived, and we are also <coughs> saying that there should be a separate budget for agriculture. And apart from that, on the education front, we are saying that the spend on education should be about 6%, which is not at that level right now, because this government's priority is helping its corporate cronies, not the poor people or not the students of this country. Right. So thank you. So thank you. there you have this particular portfolio, this manifesto claims, uh, very much like uh, uh, new uh, kind of like schemes, especially concentrating on students, young voters and uh, uh, like a lot of other things which would actually appease them. So this right. way after MK Stalin has become the president of DMK, there is a new manifesto. Apparently certain new schemes are to be implemented too. Right. Pramod, thanks for having that conversation. And clearly, Mr. Sarvanan believes that if DMK comes to power, they'll be able to undo all the injustices done by the previous government. Thanks for joining us with your inputs.